Where'd you get this? I know a guy who knows a guy who shot a guy. Yes. That's us. It's fantastic. So to kick things off, I wanted to ask you, have you ever heard of the fan theory that each John Wick film is about one of the five stages of grief? How do you mm. respond to that? Mm. <sighs> yeah, I remember seeing that. We haven't done anything like that intentionally, but if it's clinically um, accurate, then I know that we're authentically trying to, I'm characters in grief. Mm -hmm. So there might be a correlation there. Um, I don't know, what are the five stages? There's like grief, sadness, anger. Starts with denial. Like denial. The fourth one would be depression. Depression. But there's five of them, so Yeah, five denial, movies. depression, <laughs> grief, uh, yeah. We wanted to ask you, why should fans experience John Wick Chapter 4 in IMAX? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Um, no, actually, Keanu and I started the whole franchise because we like the movie experience. Not just movies, mm -hmm. movie experience. Some of my best memories are in a movie theater. Um, Keanu and I decided when we were going to do something like this, like, we didn't think anybody would ever see the first one. So we're like, oh, we better get ready to show it on the iPhone. But we're gonna shoot it like, you know, we're gonna try some anamorphic lenses, we're gonna try the big lens first, we're gonna try the big wide scale kind of symmetrical or um, uh, super wide symmetrical editing kind of thing. And we're like, we're, we're gonna pretend that we're, somebody's gonna see this, or somebody's gonna see it on the big screen. Cut to now, um, John Wick 4 was entirely shot to be seen on the big screen, on IMAX, on the, on the you know, laser projectors, the big screen. We pushed our color range so far on this one with the highlights and the contrast, which, of course, on IMAX <laughs> gleans, not to mention the sound. It starts with the love of cinema, and it starts with that with our director, Chad Stahelski, and with me, and with the DP, uh, Dan Laustsen, um, who's remarkable. It goes into, like, cinema, thinking about the lenses, the camera bodies, uh, looking at the framing. Everything is thought in a cinematic big frame uh, format, you know, just the way all of the composition, all of the aesthetics are aimed to that experience. That impactful environment uh, is much more intense, pleasurable, and memorable. The first punch of the movie is meant to shake your chest, and the last little bit of soundtrack on the movie is meant to make you choke up a little bit. And it's hard to get that from a smaller device, but if you're sitting in in the room surrounded by other people that are on that same emotional ride as you, it's a completely different experience, let's face it, right? One's complete immersion, sensory immersion. One is a relationship, an isolatory, I'm holding a device, I'm sitting on the TV, I'm sitting on my couch, but when you're in that IMAX theater and the room is shaking and you can feel the excitement or the sadness or the trepidation or just the exhilaration from the person next to you, you get a different experience out of it. This is kind of a fun one. So with John Wick uh, chapter four, he goes all around the globe. Mm. In your mind, do you think John Wick is traveling commercial? Is he going private, stowing away? Yeah, we think about that all the time, actually. And it's for me in John Wick chapter four, he was moving through the, and I, I hope it comes across that he's moving in the underground, in the Bowery King world. And so I always thought of him, if he's flying, like he's in some container you know, he's part of some kind of, he's not commercial and it's not private. It's like, you know, it's, I don't know, shipping. He's yeah. like a shipping object. Cargo. Like. Yeah, he's like cargo. <laughs> he's contraband. What was it like? I know you stopped by the IMAX offices and played this times a couple times. Many times Yeah. Um, what was it like for you to see it up on the IMAX screen? That's always, at post, I, people understand how long post goes. It was like 89 weeks for me. It was a really long post on this one. And then you do all the different versions for, you know, HDR, SDR, you do the, the standard version, then you have the IMAX version. Yeah. And people don't really understand. I don't get to see the whole movie put together sound. We do our sound in one place. We do our color in another place. We do the VFX in a third place. We, the only time I get it put together is when we do that last, the DCP, the final mix of the movie. And I only get to see it two, three times before it's all done. So when we, the last thing we usually do in the post process is IMAX, the big one. <laughs> so when I sit in that theater and I'm with my two or three, you know, inner, inner circle people and we watch it for the first time, it's one of the first times for me as well. And when you see it, I mean, that's when it really hits you about what you've either achieved or failed or what you're proud of or what you're not. Um, as a director, it's probably one of the most satisfying, most electric 
the feelings I've had on this whole journey of 10 years is when you sit in that theater and you know, you're in IMAX, you're sitting there and you get to feel it and hear it and see it for the first time, it, it does put a smile on your face.